Today's episode is all about speed. I time walk through a city and play chicken with a London bus. All this coming up. Scream if you want to go faster. So since this video is about speed, and since I'm heading into London, I thought why not feature a great big London bus. So one thing to mention with an image like this is that you can't really achieve the look with one capture, so you have to composite two images together with completely different shutter speeds. Thankfully, it's a fairly straightforward process, and the composite is not a difficult one, as you'll see later on in the video. There it is, my photo shoot location. The famous IMAX cinema next to London Waterloo Station. And I've chosen this spot because it's right on a roundabout and red London buses come whizzing around this building all day long. So I should have plenty of opportunities for a really good capture. So I'm going for a low angle shot here. No tripod required except for my pixie tripod lifting up the front of the lens a touch. For the first image, I'm using a three-stop ND filter so I can drag the shutter and create some motion blur. The ND filter takes me from 50th of a second down to 1 6th of a second, so all I need to do is set my shutter to burst mode and wait for a bus to come. For my next image, I'll remove the ND filter and open my aperture as wide as possible to 1.4 because I want my shutter to be a thousandth of a second and expose for the subject with ISO at 500. Then using face detect autofocus, I'll take a test shot in place, then switch over to manual focus as I'll be running into frame. Okay, let's create some magic. So here I have my two images open in Photoshop. And the first thing I'm going to do using the pen tool is create a path around the bus section of the image, including some of the road, the sky, and the IMAX cinema. Then turn the path into a selection, one pixel radius, and simply Control or Command C to copy, head over to the other image, Control or Command V to paste and drag it into place. I'll rename this layer Bus, and for now I'll turn off this layer. Then with the background selected, I'm going to make a rough selection of the figure using the Object Selection tool. Draw a box around the body, and that's done a fairly good job. I'll just clean up using the Quick Selection tool using the ALT key to swap between subtracting from the selection. This doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. I'm going to head into Select and Mask and using the Refine Edge Brush tool, just concentrate on the areas which will overlap with the bus. Now we can turn back on the bus layer and turn the selection into an inverted layer mask by holding the ALT key. Finally, I'll need to tidy up the mask. Using the brush tool, I'll set the flow to 100% and the hardness to around 80%. Then pressing X to toggle between white or black, I'll do some final mask cleanup. Perfect. Now for the bus. I'll reduce the flow to around 10% and the brush hardness all the way down. Then with the black brush, just soften the transition between the composited images. So I'm very pleased with the composite, so I'm going to stamp down the image with Control, Alt, Shift and E, and rename this new layer to Stamp. Create a copy of this layer and rename it Stamp Blur, because guess what? We're gonna blur it. With Filter, Blur, Motion Blur, and I've just set the blur angle to a horizontal position, same as the direction of the bus. 
and then the distance around 60 pixels. Next up, I'll create a layer mask of the blur layer. Then with the brush tool set to black and hardness at 0%, we can start to reveal the underlying layer, making sure to stay away from the edges. And this is going to be a creative choice, deciding which parts of the body would be moving faster than the others, i.e. the arms and the legs. I'm just going to remove the blur from the bust too, as this already had natural blur to begin with. Okay, this is starting to look really good. I'm going to create one more stamped layer with Control, Alt, Shift and E. I'll rename this Camera Raw and turn this into a smart object so we can begin the color grading process. This symbol now tells us we're a smart object. So we'll head up to Filter and Camera Raw Filter. And I'll do a couple of global adjustments here. I'll bump the shadows a touch about plus eight. Clarity, plus 15. Then heading into the HSL sliders, on the Hue tab, introduce more cyans into the blues. Saturation, I'll remove some of the greens and blues. And finally, luminance, I'm just going to brighten the skin tones on the orange slider. And lighten those trees in the background and the blues a touch. Here's a before and after. Lastly, I'm going to draw a graduated filter from left to right and darken a touch to bring focus into the middle. And one more radial filter to brighten the floor. Here's a before and after. Now for some dodge and burn using a curves adjustment layer. I'll drag up the curve then invert the layer mask with Ctrl or Command I. Choose the brush tool, set to white, and flow at 5%, and begin highlighting the areas that need it. Create one more curves adjustment layer and drag the curve down. Invert the mask with Control or Command I. And I'll just tidy house here and rename these layers. And then begin the burn process for the dark areas. I'll just add a touch of vignette to the corners here. And here's a before and after. And I think I'm going to add a global adjustment to the highlights using a levels adjustment layer. And I'll drag the white point over. And I'm not too fussed about blowing out the very lightest areas of the image, but I think this helps the exposure for the running man and bus. Next up, I'm going to remove some of the magenta color cast from this image with a color balance adjustment layer. And it's just a subtle change on the highlight tones. A touch of cyan and green and some yellow. Uh, before and after gives us a subtle coolness to the image. But I'll just back off the opacity around 25%. Okay, almost there. I want to add some vibrance to the bus using a hue saturation adjustment layer. And I'll use the eyedropper tool to target the reds. Around here should do it. And I'll just drag the hue slider all the way to the left so we can see which colors are affected. Then we can use these target sliders to make sure we include all the reds in the bus. Then return the hue slider back to its original position. Now we have full control over the bus using the saturation and lightness sliders. A quick before and after. Now that's just added some intensity into those reds. But some of the skin tones were affected so I'll remove those by selecting the mask and I'll remove the effect from the skin. And one final change I'm going to make is the blacks in the image. Using a selective color adjustment layer, choose the blacks from the drop down menu and with the black slider, increase to around plus five. A little before and after gives us a deeper shade in those blacks and good overall contrast. And now for the big reveal. We went from this to this in just under 10 minutes. That's it, you gorgeous lot. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, leave some comments, and I'll see you next week.